Hello, uh, my name is Cynthia Damon, and I'm a professor in the Department of Classical Studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Today, I'd like to spend some time talking to you about reading the critical apparatus. Texts from the ancient world reach us via a long, complicated process of transmission from copy to copy. As printed today, they are at best near approximations of what an ancient author wrote. A critical edition, which presents the text along with the surviving evidence of the transmission process and an editor's interpretation of it, allows the reader to go beyond a generalized expectation of error and to see whether any given bit of text is secure or corrupt or disputed or weakly supported by the manuscripts that preserve it. No classical text can be read responsibly without one. But our existing digital libraries of classical texts routinely strip out the evidence of and arguments about the transmission process and present only the text. They do so by the simple expedient of omitting the critical apparatus. If we're going to reinstate the critical apparatus, as we must, if digital editions of classical texts are to serve the needs of scholarship, and if digital libraries are to become the go-to repositories of classical texts, we need to understand what the apparatus is. Only that understanding will fortify us to resist the trivialization of the apparatus that is implicit in its casual omission by digital libraries. This trivialization is explicit in the text encoding initiative guidelines, guidelines that are meant to foster standardization in the digital editions being produced at present. The TEI guidelines define the apparatus as a repository of variants and assert that individual readings are the crucial elements in any critical apparatus of variants. For classical texts, at least, a proper critical apparatus is far more than a repository of textual variants. It's a repository of everything that an editor judges necessary for the reader who wants to understand why the text being read is what it is. More precisely, the apparatus is a set of notes designed to foster in the reader an awareness of the historical and editorial processes that resulted in the text she is reading, and to give the reader what she needs to evaluate the editor's decisions. Some apparatus content is, of course, the variant readings in the manuscript tradition. But these variants only yield a text through the operation of an editor's theory about how the manuscripts that contain them are related to one another and to the authorial original. So the lists of variants have to be understood as embodiments of a theory. In other words, when the editor reports in the apparatus that manuscripts A and B have the reading in the text, while C, D, and E, and F and G have variants, what she communicates is likely to be something like this. Given my theory about how manuscripts A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are related to one another, the reading of A and B has manuscript authority, and makes acceptable sense and is therefore printed. Whereas the readings of C, D, and E and F and G are scribal innovations in the manuscript from which each group is separately descended and are therefore not used in the constitution of the text. And beneath that message is a theory that defines what a reading with manuscript authority is. Basically, a reading that may have reached us through a continuous sequence of accurate copies of what the author wrote back in antiquity a reading that may therefore be authentic and by definition right. This is much too much to write in small print at the bottom of every page for every lemma. But some variation on that reasoning is often implicit in notes that list manuscript variants. Furthermore, for most classical works, the manuscript variants do not suffice for constituting the text. At best, they allow one to reconstruct an archetype. That is, a manuscript, usually lost, that is the source of all extant copies. But the archetypes of classical texts generally post-date the authorial originals by centuries, often many centuries. And as those copies succeeded copies over centuries, corruptions must have entered the text, even if we can no longer trace the process in any detail. The situation is even worse when the process of transmission that produced the extant manuscripts is so complex that one cannot reconstruct an archetype or make strong assertions about manuscript authority. In such traditions, the variants are even further removed, temporally and culturally, from the authorial text. They have to be evaluated on their merits, and all too often their merits are not enough to generate an acceptable text. That's when editors have recourse to emendation or declare the text irreparably corrupt. All of this information is presented in the critical apparatus. 
which is therefore a repository not of variants, but of arguments in the best sense of the word about variants.